and thank you for for being here. Um, let me uh, very quickly introduce uh, where I come from. Um, I work for a uh, one of, if not the largest IT company in Denmark, then one of the largest, and we have a. Uh, 40 plus years uh, history uh, and we've been a great part of the Danish digitalization of uh, the Danish society and uh, we say that uh, KMD as the name is uh, we provide solutions from cradle to grave because there aren't any uh, almost not, no situation uh, during uh, the Danish lifespan that uh, doesn't uh, isn't supported by a KMD system. Um, but I'm not going to talk about every one of these systems. I'm going to focus on um, on one of them, uh, which is called Energy Key, uh, which supports the uh, utility sector and uh, how we um, we are using energy and uh, how we can do it uh, in a more uh, sufficient or efficient way. So, very quickly uh, to uh, to uh, to narrow it down to tell you what is uh, Energy Key. Uh, energy Key is a product that. Uh, collect data from uh, from meters around uh, the country and uh, we select from many uh, hundreds not if not millions of uh, meters around uh, the country and we put them together and uh, as uh, stated uh, in the lower part of this slide uh, we collect the data we control validate estimate correct and calculate and as i heard uh, from previous speakers uh, it's very important that uh, if we have to make uh, valid decisions, we need to do it on, uh, on data that are of a very high quality or if, if, if high as possible, there is a greater chance that uh, the decisions that we're going to make is uh, even better. Um, there are two uh, areas uh, in this uh, energy key product. There is this meter data retrieval, which means uh, collecting all the data, which is one discipline. And then there is the meter data management, uh, which is another part in which we are modeling the data in order to, one, one, one thing is to get all the, um, all the results, all the data from the meters, but uh, how, how to, uh, to understand them, uh, how sh should they be split or should they be merged together? Sh should they be whatever? There, there is a lot of uh, rules in there that uh, needs to be done. And uh, I've learned uh, during my time that uh, there's a lot of meters, but there is also a lot of virtual uh, meters, which are making more sense in a business uh, uh, oriented uh, or even a manufacturing oriented uh, aspect. So when we have been through this, um, we can uh, expose those high quality data so that we can run our business, or we can uh, make marketing and, and, and such, or we can um, publish services for customers and, and others who would like to have an insight into uh, what is going on. But what is for us or for, for the, the work that we do right at the moment is, is, is the, the, the part at the bottom uh, right, uh, analytics and also what we call energy management, EMS. Because uh, when you have the, uh, the right data, you, you can start on uh, doing some energy management, doing some decision based on data, and uh, I will come back to some uh, examples uh, later in my presentation about what you can do and what we have achieved uh, with this EMS solution. So this is um, some of the um, visualizations of the data uh, that we uh, produce. This is just a few, um, but it's it's it targeted at the both. Uh, some of them are targeted at the end customers, but some of them also, of course, targeted at at the people running the business, uh, so that they can follow what's going on and then can set up uh, alerts or alarms, whatever, so that whenever something unexpected is happening, they can. Uh, automatically or manually go in and, and, and look into it and see if they should uh, do something. So there are uh, quite a few KPIs they can follow. They can make some reports or they can do some visualizations on maps and so forth, uh, whatever is, uh, is required. The middle one, the monitor at the top is also uh, is quite interesting, I think, because that has something to do with human interactions because this is uh, an info um, screen that you can put up uh, at the entrance of your office building, for instance, or in the in the um, in the room that you are in, and it can actually show the current uh, usage of different kinds of uh, electricity, heating and water and so forth. And, and that's actually a good way of notching people, notching people to to understand what is going on. And if it's high, they, they may even start thinking about what they're doing and, and 
and the behavior they could uh, be changed due to such uh, visualizations. Uh, so lessons learned uh, to start with what we have done and some of the stuff that we have uh, encountered during our development of this system is that one of the very important part, as I also already mentioned, is the, the quality of the data. And in this case, I call it the maturity of the data, because if we look from the left to the right, um, we, we get the raw data, so to speak, the metadata retrieval. And then we can start some metadata management and the EMS, as I mentioned, the energy management system. But that's only the three first steps, uh, because as I also mentioned, these data, along with a lot of other data, uh, and, and I think uh, which is important to amplify here is that it's it's not these data collected in itself, it's the data uh, in action with other data that can bring out the um, the great uh, value uh, when, when you start on these analytics is that you can get some um, insight into the uh, a more a whole picture right? and perhaps some of the uh, also um, is, uh, is 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 very much um, over overlaying with uh, the digital twin um, uh, which we have heard about because there are some in those models there are there are data and there are different models and they overlap and they could be combined and as I see it we have uh, these uh, energy data and we have data from all other kinds of systems that could be uh, potentially be used together. And when you have that insight, uh, you, you can start on what we could call energy climate sustainability management. It's a long word. We haven't decided on what to call it yet. Uh, so it's, it, it contains all of what we could think of. But in that, um, there are a lot of stuff that we know that we should react upon. Uh, if there is something going um, very odd, uh, like why are we using uh, all this water right now? It could be a water leak somewhere, or if this is um, during the, the the weekend, why are we using so much uh, power? Maybe we haven't uh, switched off the light and stuff like that. But that is something that we know um, we should react upon. But when when we gather a lot of data, there are a lot of uh, hidden treasures in there, so to speak, uh, which we have to uh, analyze and and discover. And in that case, we, we need analytics and we need um, um, machine learning perhaps, or even uh, AI in, in order to identify stuff and over time learn what is, uh, what is required, what could we do better. And actually sometimes also try and do it and see if it goes better. And if not, then they can um, up, uh, put away the, that plan and, and, and try something else. So what we have, uh, trying to, to put this into a system. Um, we have this, um, you, you probably know, the plan, do, act, uh, check, act um, wheel. And we, we're doing uh, the right part uh, on the right side. I mean, also what we think is right, but it's on the right side. And what we are looking more into, uh, this, this is the new cases. Uh, so this is, of course, lessons learned, but we are. this is new territory for us. We have, don't have that, uh, that much yet, but we would really much like to look much more into it because we know that uh, in order to the sustainability agenda and, and other cases, it's where uh, the business is. And uh, let me explain why. So we have a, a case scenario, and uh, if we look at a um, production site, this is uh, just uh, some, something um, um, not real, uh, just to illustrate a, a point here. And, and in, in what, what is normally put in here, there are some meters. And they, those meters are even uh, sometimes just one meter saying, OK, uh, we are using that much power, and uh, we, we can get an invoice for that, and we can pay for it. That's the, the basic needs for what information is needed. But if you want to look deeper into it, you need to add much more um, sensors so that we can find and follow what is actually going on. And um, when, when that is, uh, I, I'm wondering, I'm still sharing my screen because I don't get any indication that I am. So please let me know. <laughs> I, I yes, hope you, we can see your screen. Oh, oh, that, that's, that's great. Because that's a movie. <laughs> okay, it was so sad if I was uh, talking and you couldn't see anything. So, so here is is this a production plant, and and if we uh, add um, more sensors, and uh, maybe not or not only these uh, sensors that are measuring the meter meters for uh, for power, but it could be for 
for noise, it could be for moist, it could be for particles. There were so many things that could have an impact on the final result of what is the, the best optimal um, production. Um, so if we do that and uh, go to the next screen, this is, um, um, that's at least how we, we, we try to illustrate, explain it. Uh, you all know that if you go to the doctor and they put all, all these uh, sensors on you, you can make this heart uh, electrocardiogram. So uh, in order to understand the uh, physics of your body, if it's working uh, okay or if not, and, and some people are getting those to carry for a long time so that they can monitor and see if, uh, if the body is fit or if there is anything that we should look for. Uh, the same, the same uh, picture I would like you to think when uh, we're talking about a, uh, a production plant, because if we add sensors on vital parts of this, we get an insight into the entire uh, production. And if we are looking at it in a, with a sustainability uh, glasses, so to speak, uh, if that's what we would like to observe, then there are parameters that we would like to identify. And as I said before, we get a lot of data and it's not something that you can uh, set up simple rules for. You, uh, you, you will probably need to start uh, uh, applying machine learning and, and other disciplines. And that's what actually what, we are, what we're doing. We're trying to, to set something up that is understanding what is going on and identifying scenarios uh, in which something is uh, is happening and in that way try and and uh, minimize optimize and, and so forth um, there was one thing that uh, i did not mention on the slide regarding maturity of the data and um, i would like to emphasize uh, i won't go back to that slide but i would like to also um, it's talk about the, the, the amount of data and the data used um, because IoT data, that's something that is produced all the time, but we, we, are, we are moving data a lot. And in order to combine it with other data, we are moving a lot of other data. And I heard also other speakers talk about data amounts and data storage and all that stuff. And we have um, identified and seen that many of our customers are using the same data they are doing the same with the data in before they start actually acting upon the data. And when everybody is doing it, it is actually a waste of, uh, of energy, waste of money, so to speak, but also energy. And in, in the end, it's not very good for the environment. So that's an agenda which is not spoken so much about, but I think the IT industry themselves, like myself, should start also looking at what are we doing it just because we can do it uh, and we have a good purpose for it? Are we doing it in the most sufficient way? I know for, my, uh, for a fact that uh, we are using a lot of data for, from a central place in Denmark called the Data for Dealer, but I also know that uh, in KMD, there is a lot of um, solutions within that collecting the same data. So we actually get gathering the same data in parallel and we could start by just doing it once. So that's another place, a plate that we are trying to, to um, um, optimize. And that's an, actually another product that I, I'm also involved in called KMD Cognito, because we are trying to gather data and process data so that we don't have to do it many times, but just one time. And for municipalities, utilities, and, and different domains within society, we are doing that so that it can be done once, and then it's a benefit for everyone instead of everyone doing uh, the same job many times. So that was just one thing that I, I forgot to, to um, mention on that slide. And this is actually what we're also doing, uh, what I just mentioned, and these data, we can um, try and see if it, is it necessary to... Uh, to uh, you know, start the the truck and 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 move data, or is it just a very 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 small subset of the data that which is actually needed somewhere else? And if we are going to uh, to do something with the data, then then let's identify it. If if not, uh, a lot of people need the same, and then just do it once. So that was the cognitive part. So what have we actually achieved uh, with this approach with the existing? Um, solution and what we are going to, to do uh, going onwards. Um, we have, uh, this is uh, um, something we have done uh, uh, with, the, with the Danish building and property agency uh, and a uh, large insurance company or pension uh, fund, I mean, PFF, PFA, uh, a Danish uh, pension fund. And, and as it says here, 
it, we are collecting uh, automatic collecting data from uh, these existing um, systems uh, and we're gathering together so that we can in a, in a whole uh, be able to do what we call energy efficient operation and we are using the dashboards which i showed uh, early on and we can uh, deviations can be uh, reported uh, seen discovered and reported upon and acted upon immediately um, and that is uh, as i mentioned before that is what we already do but we have uh, that's the value that we have given to, to the uh, Danish Building and Property Agency because they have a lot of buildings they, they maintain and they have to look after. And, and by having this uh, system support system to do that, they are um, becoming very efficient and, and for sure saving a lot of uh, energy and money on that account. The next one I, I would like to, to show you here is that uh, the Copenhagen a municipality, which is a, 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 a front runner or showing some leadership in, in trying to be uh, the most sustainable uh, city uh, in the world, actually. They, they have a goal that they would like to be um, zero uh, emission uh, capital, the first one in the world uh, very soon. And in order to do so, um, they have to team up with um, somebody that uh, have experience and with systems that also can support it and uh, actually together with uh, a large city uh, city another large city in the world the beijing city they are starting to uh, to, to work together in order to achieve these goals and in part of that uh, we are we are of course uh, happy to to be part of uh, that journey not not a very big part but we are part of that journey so what have we actually achieved? Uh, another large city in Denmark called Aarhus, um, when they started uh, looking at the energy consumption and when they started to get systems that could support the, um, the way they work, um, it, it, it uh, showed that they, uh, the first year they would save about, around 7 million Danish crowns uh, on energy alone uh, just by um, getting the data and, and doing the energy management uh, in a more efficient way. So that was just one example. Another one is uh, the Copenhagen Airport. Uh, they have a very, um, very, uh, what do you call it, uh, ambitious uh, energy strategy, and uh, they would like to, uh, to, by 2023, to be uh, at a much lower em emission rate. And in order to do so, they they need uh, systems like uh, Energy Key, uh, and they have a very um, they come forward and, and they have uh, gained a lot of insight into what's going on. But what they also have realized is that it's not just themselves, uh, but by being uh, uh, being able to monitor the um, the energy consumption, they are actually also in uh, better at uh, informing those co their customers, uh, those uh, the shops and the other companies working at the airport, so that they could give them insight and information on how. Uh, they were running and doing and, and, and advising them to become better um, in order to uh, to save energy and, and stuff. Uh, the last example here is uh, the, which uh, could be the one that we would uh, start by monitoring much more closely is um, the E-Table, which is a, a large ca uh, carpet company uh, in Denmark. Um, they, they produce, have a lot of production lines uh, like the welding um, uh, and, and they produce a lot of carpets and uh, they would of course also like to know insight into these running um, um, what do you call it um, when, what, the, the workflow in there and in order to understand better what is best to do and also to actually because they would like they are they would really like to be informative about uh, how much carbon uh, equivalents have been gone into one square meter of this carpet and by monitoring and having the data they can actually be able to add that information to the um, to the product so consumers can can see okay this carpet is more green than this carpet and i'm not talking about the color right now it's of course uh, uh, the production value of it so that was very quickly um a solution which have uh, been is used widely and we have gained some insight and and uh, the roadmap going forward so thank you for um, listening and uh, any questions <laughs>